freedom oh freedom oh freedom over me and before i be a slave i'll be buried in my grave and go home to my lord and be free on may 4th 1961 seven black and six white students left washington dc on trailway and greyhound buses heading to the deep south to peacefully protest and defeat the jim crow law to bring attention to the segregation issues faced by African Americans in the United States, a group of individuals known as the Freedom Riders took a stand starting on May 4, 1961. The Freedom Riders peacefully protested discrimination in public places, which drew newspaper and television outlets and made the protests a highly publicized event. It then made Americans aware of how violent and often bloody discrimination could be. Seeing the violence against the peaceful protesters encouraged many more people to step forward to test the 1960 Supreme Court decision. Jim Crow was not a person. It was a law, and for some people, it was daily life. The Jim Crow laws was segregation of black and whites, mostly stood out by signs. The Jim Crow law started in 1877. Abraham Lincoln said the Civil War was the end of slavery. The white people in the South did not like that they had no control over their slaves. So the people made a law, and they called it the Jim Crow laws, which was a dance and song made by T.D. Daddy Rice, who was a comedian and made fun of blacks who were slaves at the time. Some of the Jim Crow laws were these. Blacks were introduced to whites, not whites introduced to blacks, because it made the whites look like they have less power over the blacks. Also, a black did not have enough power to shake hands with a white man. If a black person laughed at or laughed with a white man, the black man would be beaten. Black children could not go to school with white children, and if a black voted, they would be killed. The Freedom Riders stopped in many cities and towns to protest the Jim Crow law by going into white-only waiting rooms, restaurants, and movie theaters. One of the cities was Charlotte, North Carolina. Here, the first arrest took place because a Freedom Rider who sat in a white-only, shoe-signed seat. Later that day, in Rock Hill, South Carolina, John Lewis was badly assaulted for protesting. In Birmingham, Alabama, the Freedom Riders met their first angry mob. The mob came at them with iron pipes, metal chains, and clubs. Further along the trip, in Anniston, Alabama, a Greyhound bus was burned by an angry mob of KKK members. In Montgomery, the biggest mob awaited them. Jim Zerg, a white freedom writer, was beaten so badly that he could not continue. Segregation must be stopped. It must be broken down. Those of us who are on the freedom ride we will continue the freedom ride. I'm not sure that I'll be able to, but we're going on to New Orleans, no matter what happens. We're dedicated to this. We'll take hitting, we'll take beating. We're willing to accept death. But we're going to keep coming until we can ride from anywhere in the South, any place else in the South without anybody making any comments, just as American citizens.
So many freedom riders were arrested that the local jails filled, so they were sent to Parchin State Penitentiary. When the prison guards would take their belongings, like mattresses, soap, and toothbrushes, to lower their spirits, the Freedom Riders would sing inspirational songs to help them stay positive. The time will come when we will not confine our march into Washington. We will march through the South, through the streets of Jackson, through the streets of Danville, through the streets of Cambridge, through the streets of Birmingham. But we will march with the spirit of love and with the spirit of dignity that we have shown here today. The results of the Freedom Rides protesting helped with the removal of the segregation in bus stops, rest areas, and movie theaters. On January 12, 2017, the city of Anniston, Alabama, and Barack Obama, our 44th president, dedicated the site where the Freedom Riders bus was set on fire as a national monument. This monument will stand to remind us of the suffering our brothers and sisters went through when they stood up to the ugly racism that existed in our country. We are all equal, not only by law, but in the eyes of God. Yeah.